Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. We are heading out to the Pac-12 to take a look at a very, very exciting matchup as the Oregon State Beavers go on the road to play the Washington Huskies Friday night. This is my favorite way to start off my weekend. A big-time Pac-12 showdown between two teams that are both very, very good, but kind of looking good in two different ways. You're both 6-2, and two, both 3-2 and two in the conference, and the Washington Huskies, they like to spread you out, air it out, and it looks a little bit more sexy. The Oregon State Beavers having just as much success, but a much more balanced attack. They play very, very good defense. There are a lot of really intriguing matchups as we get into it. Before we get into it, though, again, I just want to say thank you guys for the support you guys have shown the channel. Both the Beaver fans and the Husky fans, you guys have been awesome checking out our stuff. If you do like the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Over 2,000 subscribers. That really does mean a lot. We love talking ball with you guys in the comment section. So if you like the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We appreciate it. Let's start getting into some ball. I want to start both teams coming off buys, hopefully getting healthy. Both teams are going to be feeling good. I want to start off with the Washington Huskies because they're the, a little bit more of the probably inconsistent team, if you will. They're 6-2. and two. They had a, a very questionable loss against an Arizona State team that is kind of just a dumpster fire. But they've also had some very, very impressive wins. And when you look at this offense and what Kalen DeBoer has done in the, what, eight months he's been the coach of Washington Huskies. I don't even know if it's been eight months. It is night and day. I remember being so excited to watch Washington football on like a Friday, Saturday, Pac-12 after dark night. I'm an East Coast guy. And then the last couple of years, it just with Coach Lake, it, it wasn't that exciting. The offense was painfully, painfully simple. They just could not move the football. They played pretty good defense, but the offense was just so boring to watch. And what this offense looks like now is just so fun to watch. They use all the blades of grass on the field. They have a ton of wide receivers that can hurt you in so many different ways. And then you have Michael Penix, a guy who's looked very, very sharp. And that's where I want to start. Michael Penix has been just extremely impressive. How he, how poorly he looked against Indiana. He's back with Kalen DeBoer. And the different ways that this Husky team can beat you, primarily through the air, they want to throw the ball around the field, but they can also run the ball extremely well. But you look at this wide receiving core, you have two kind of alpha dogs there in Roma Duze and Jalen McMillan, who are, are the guys, the go-to guys. When you need a big play, that is where the Huskies are going. But there's a lot of other guys that can hurt you on this field. You look at a guy like Josh Jackson, who I know all too well from Michigan, the guy that you just get the ball in his hands and you're going to get some exciting plays. He's averaging 12.1 yards per catch. He's a guy that will also get so, some runs out of the backfield. Get the ball in his hands. You're going to get some big plays. You also have guys like Jalen Polk. They just – they have so many weapons. And then Oregon State, on the defense side of the ball, has a phenomenal secondary. And the, you look what they've done. They're forcing almost two turnovers per game. And a lot of those have been interceptions. You look at guys like Jaden Grant. You look at guys like Ryan Cooper Jr., Alex Austin, they get their hands on a lot of footballs, a lot of tip balls, and those tip balls a lot of times turn into interceptions. When you look at picking this game, Washington comes in as a four-point favorite at home, which I kind of like. That has to be the biggest matchup you see in terms of Oregon State's, their best part of their defense is the back end. And what does Washington want to do? It wants to throw the ball and attack that secondary. If Washington can do that, I really do like Washington's chances. But you look at what Oregon State's done, not a lot of teams have been able to throw the ball around. You look at a team like Washington State. They went into Oregon State, tried to do that. They simply couldn't. This defense has been extremely good, only allowing 55% completion percentage to opposing quarterbacks. This is going to be a very, very fun matchup to keep your eyes on because of how good this Oregon State secondary is. Now you flip the script and you look at this Oregon State defense or offense, it's not as sexy as Washington. They don't spread you out. They don't throw the ball all around the pitch. But they're so, so balanced. You look how balanced they are. I mean, they what? They throw for 230 yards per game. They rush for 200 yards per game. Both teams move the football. Washington averaging over 500 yards per game. Oregon State also putting up 33 points per game, 425 yards per game. But it's a much more balanced, much more methodical way of moving the football. A little bit less explosive plays but you're going to expect the time of possession to be in Oregon State's favor. And that's another thing to keep an eye on. This Huskies defense, I really don't think is that bad. They've been pretty good against the run, and I actually really like their front seven. When you look at what they've been able to do, teams are only running the ball for 3.3 yards per carry. Oregon State's going to want to run the football. 
the Oregon State fans, shout out you guys. When I was previewing them in the summer, I was like, what is what is this offense going to look like? Damian Martinez. You guys said it. A true freshman guy who's been impressing in camp. He is coming on and looking extremely impressive the last couple of weeks. You look at what he's been doing, 6.5 yards per carry. Had a massive game against Colorado, and he looks the part. You look at him, he's what, 6'1", 225 pounds. He's no true freshman out on the field. He is an absolute bruiser. He's a grown man. Look for Oregon State to get him going. But again, this Washington State front seven is very good. We noted how good they've been against the run. But I really do think that the, you look at the players. Cam Wright at linebacker. I love him. The, the guy I've been most impressed with this year is Braylon Trice. Not a guy that was really on my radar, especially for the 2023 NFL draft. He's been very good. ZTF, obviously, you know what you have with him. This Washington Huskies team, they give up some points. They give up some yards. That's more of a product of how explosive and how many plays and how many points that offense scores. So, of course, the defense is not going to look great on the stat sheet. But I do think this Washington defense is no slouch in any means. Kind of when you look at Wake Forest. The defense is pretty good in terms of yards per play. They're just going up against a lot of drives because of how fast that Wake Forest offense scores. You see that very similarly with this Washington team that they score the ball a lot. They run a lot of plays, and then in turn, that defense is facing a lot of plays. So, of course, they're not going to look great on the stat sheet. Now, let's get to the pick. I really – I think I do like Washington to cover the four points. Four points for Washington Huskies offense, how good they've looked, is not that big. I'm not that scared of that number. Now, the big question is, what's this game going to look like? We talked about it with UNC Pitt last year or last week. I think this question is very important. What's this game going to look like? Is Washington going to get into a shootout where it's just who can score the most points? Because then you got to favor Washington with how explosive that offense is. But if Oregon State can slow down the game, limit the amount of times Michael Penix and that explosive offense touches the ball, I do think Oregon State has a very good shot at going on the road and winning this football game. It really does depend on how well Oregon State can run the football, slow this game down. If this game is kind of determined in the 20s or low 30s, I think Oregon State has a very, very good chance at winning. But if Washington gets Oregon State to play fast, try to kind of have win in a shootout, you got to favor Washington. I think I'm taking Washington with the four to cover the four points at home. There is not many better environments than a Friday night Husky Stadium environment. I think that'll play a factor. Oregon State, you still have some question marks about how explosive this offense can be. I think Washington just has a little bit more of an explosive offense. I think you trust them to put up more points in Oregon State. I think they figure out to win the, how the, how to win this football game. But again, this game is going to be very close. It's not a game that I'm that excited to bet on because this Oregon State team, although is not as sexy as this Huskies team, is a very, very good football team. It's going to be a great one. It's going to be a great way to start off your weekend. We're going to be betting it. I don't know what side we'll bet on, but I'm leaning the Huskies with the four points early. Again, we appreciate you guys for supporting the channel. Again, if you like the content, consider subscribing. Over 2,000 subscribers. You guys have been awesome. We really do appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to you all later. Peace.